I'm your host Dave, and this is Alagamoto, your weekly look at a bygone era in gaming history, specifically the 8 and 16-bit era of Sega consoles. Is it really bygone though? I'm certainly still playing these games, and not just to write these reviews, and of course I'm sure a lot of people are as well. Or at least I hope so, or else I'm going to seem like one weird old dude. Which isn't necessarily inaccurate, but enough about me. Let's get to this week's game, which happens to be for the Sega Genesis. And that game is... Rampart! If you're a certain age, you've probably heard of Rampart due to the fact that Rampart appeared on a wide spread of different home computers, consoles, and handhelds. To name a few, Rampart had ports on DOS, Amiga, Atari ST, Commodore 64, NES, Super NES, Game Boy, Lynx, and then finally, today's release on the Genesis, as well as a Master System release that we'll take a look at in about 100 episodes or so. So, more or less, you couldn't browse a toy store or electronics boutique around 1992 without tripping over a copy of Rampart, as it was everywhere. Ads for Rampart were rampant as well, and appeared commonly in comic books and video game magazines. And I'd say that those comic book ads were probably my first exposure to the game, as I don't recall seeing the arcade version until much later, and I've still never actually played it. Oh, what's that? Oh, yeah, I guess I did leave out that detail. The reason why Rampart appeared on so many consoles and computers was because it was a port of a popular arcade game. And Tangan knew there was money to be made off of people that were familiar with the original arcade machine from Atari. That was released in February of 1991. Rampart ended up in two different configurations. The original release that I just mentioned, a three-player affair, which looks sort of like a Super Sprint or Iron Man Ivan Stewart Super Off-Road, just minus the steering wheels and instead replacing them with trackballs, making the original version of Rampart the only arcade machine I can think of with three trackballs. As you can imagine, this version of the arcade machine was a bit expensive, so a few months later Atari also offered a pared-down two-player conversion kit version that would instead just use joysticks. Rampart was apparently quite a hit regardless of my exposure to it, which I'm going to chalk up to it just coming out a few years before I really start frequenting arcades. I've got this strange memory of a local Pizza Hut having it for some reason. No idea if that's real or just an early sign that I'm losing it. Or maybe both. As a result of its popularity, all the ports I mentioned previously started coming to life. The Genesis version was a natural home for Rampart because like other Atari Arcade releases that we've looked at previously on Xylogamoto, the arcade version of Rampart is powered by a Motorola 68000 clocked at more or less the same speed as the one in the Genesis. And both machines feature a Yamaha sound chip, with the arcade version getting a YM2413 and the Genesis of course having the YM2612. I've got this entire intro and I just realized I hadn't mentioned what kind of game Rampart is, or why it would need trackballs to control it or even more so how it could support three players. Oops. Well, Rampart is an interesting game to say the least, and I'm actually surprised it was released in arcades to begin with, but I can definitely say it's an original title, and I've never played a game quite like it. And you probably haven't either. To sum up, Rampart is a combination of a strategy and puzzle game with some mild action elements as well. So how good is this game, and, and how accurate is the Genesis port? Does it suffer from not having trackball control? And why does Pat Contry mention it so much? Well, we'll attempt to answer most of those questions in a minute, but first, a look at the package. And this is Rampart for the Sega Genesis. Or at least I should say this is the first release of Rampart for the Genesis, as it, along with other Tengen titles like Hard Driving, got re-released later in cardboard boxes as well. From a case perspective, this copy of Rampart's in really good shape, with no scratches or tears anywhere on the outer cover. The hang tab has unfortunately been removed, but whoever did it at least cut it smoothly so there's not a lot of jagged edges. The inner cover has no water damage, but I think it's been sun bleached a tiny bit. Maybe not, and if it is, I certainly don't care enough to try to upgrade this copy. This is good enough for me. As far as the cover goes, I love everything about this artwork. It comes straight from the original arcade machine, so they didn't ruin anything by trying to reinvent the wheel. Although, there is one oddity that I've got to point out. If you notice, 
For the Genesis cover, the knight is pointing to the upper left, whereas in the original arcade artwork, he's pointing at the upper right. Also, it seems like the Genesis version is the only version that has this goof, as every other port that used the arcade artwork has him pointing to the upper right, including the Japanese Mega Drive release and the Master System release. It doesn't detract from the cover in any way, I just think it's an odd bit of trivia. Now that I look at it a little bit more, it looks like they did this because the knight would have been standing in front of the crossbar logo, so it makes sense. Beyond odd graphic design issues, the logo's classic with the brick inlay, and I like how they snuck the Genesis logo tucked in on the side, which I don't recall seeing on any other title. On a quick note, the spine has the name in the traditional Tangan yellow block font, which I understand for uniformity's sake. However, I would have preferred they use the Rampart logo for this, as I think I complained about this with Road Blasters as well, and it's just a stylistic choice, but when you have something that stands out so much like that logo, it should be used whenever you can. Flipping over the back, and we have more tradition from Tengen, this time being the white background with four screenshots and flavor text sandwiched between the two by two layout. This might be my favorite Tengen rear cover so far. The tagline at the top is great and stands out, and the screenshots, while not perfect, don't detract from the game art. Also, I haven't seen this fourth screen yet, so I'm assuming that's when someone loses a two-player game. The flavor text does a good job of hyping up the game as well, especially this last line. Don't lose your head, because you will, if you lose. Opening the box up, and the cartridge is in good shape, and the manual isn't bad either. It's just got the dreaded page curl that sometimes happens when these are not closed right and they butt up against the spine on the inside. Like with most Tangan manuals, due to them being arcade ports, there's not a ton here, with realistically only seven pages of manual, with that first page just being a nice intro. Oh, hey, it's that line about losing your head again. It wasn't that good. Anyway, the rest of the manual just concerns itself with the basics of the game, and like I've complained before with Tangan, no screenshots, with the only graphic being of the controller. It would have been really nice to have art to go with the various ship descriptions, but oh well, this is one of those cases that if you don't have a manual, you're, you're not really missing much when you're playing the game. Okay, that's the package. Let's get on the game and see if Rampart might be up your alley. So I mentioned earlier that the arcade version of Rampart comes in two or three player varieties. And as you would expect, the Genesis port is simply a port of the two player version, just like all the other versions released, until its inclusion in the Midway Arcade Treasures compilation. And before you ask, apparently Midway bought Atari Games in 1996, which is why an Atari game is included in a Midway branded title. Anyway, one thing I thought was interesting is the title screen still features colors of all three players, blue, red, and orange, even though the orange player was excised from the game. It makes me wonder if the two-player arcade version is the same way. Regardless, if you have the two- or three-player version, the single-player game mode is quite different from the multiplayer game mode. I don't talk a ton about multiplayer game experience on Zalagamoto, as I usually concentrate just on single-player, but for a game like Rampart, it has to at least be touched on, so let's get that out of the way. As you may have guessed, in two-player mode, players control two different armies, the blue army and the red army. Each game map is geographically split, for instance, with the blue army having access to the left side of the screen, and the red army having access to the right. And the goal is, as you might expect, to blow the living shit out of each other. Gameplay is similar to single player mode, but instead of one army trying to defend itself from a naval based attack, both players are responsible for fortifying castles, and then based on those fortifications, placing cannons and launching an attack on enemy fortifications. Once the building, placing, and attacking phases have finished, a new round starts, and then you do it all again until either you meet the round limit, which is set in options and can be either 5, 7, or 9 rounds, or until one of the sides fails to protect a castle during a round. This two-player mode of Rampart is definitely one of the strengths of the game, and it should not be overlooked if you're looking for two-player action on the Genesis. Since each player has a level playing field, gameplay really comes down to who has the quicker reaction times during the building sequences, and who is better with a cannon during the action phase, 
making for a very competitive game for those with similar skill levels. Unfortunately, there's no way to handicap a side, so if one player is definitely better than the other, two-player mode may be a little less fun in those instances. But I really doubt there's that many Rampart Grandmasters out there in 2021. Now, let's move on to the meat of the review and look at that single-player mode. Single-player mode consists of six levels increasing in difficulty with the geographic layouts becoming more and more difficult to defend against depending on the layout of the land versus sea. In every level, you play as an army that is intending to defend itself from a naval-led assault, so as you can imagine, the amount of land included in a map versus the amount of water, and also the shape of those two things, have a direct correlation on how difficult it is to defend yourself from the enemy. Not only is the actual geographic layout something you have to worry about, when planning on trying to decide which ships to fend off, but also the positioning of the various castles on the land. Some castles are closer to the shore, which means they'll be quicker to attack from ground forces, but then some castles are further away, which probably seems like an easy choice, but choosing one of those castles usually means you're up against the border of the map, which can make fortifying your castle difficult, as constructing and reconstructing a wall against the hard border can be incredibly frustrating depending on how the computer decides to allot you building materials. I haven't mentioned this yet, and I probably should have since it's the core of what makes Rampart Rampart, but you might be asking why is it difficult to build fortifications for your castles? Or even how do you build fortifications for your castles? Well, this is probably my favorite part of the game even though I'm absolutely terrible at it. During the first phase of a round, which is the build phase, you are given 25 seconds to place wall pieces, with the goal of having a fully connected wall surrounding at least one of your castles by the end of the 25 seconds. If you don't accomplish this, you lose, and are given the opportunity to continue up to three times, which starts the level over from scratch, except now you are given four cannons to start out with instead of two. That seems simple enough, right? And it would be if you were just given regular standard block shaped wall pieces to place on the land. Does Rampart do that? Oh no, no 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 no. That would be far too simple. Instead, your army's corps of engineers is about as efficient as a Soviet factory worker after his third vodka break. And instead, wall pieces are given to you in what mostly shapes you'd associate with Tetris. Huh, I guess that comparison was more apt than I planned on. Anyway, so to build and rebuild walls in Rampart, you have to piece together these odd shapes of wall, and they are given to you in random order, so frequently you may need a piece of a certain size to finish off a wall and not get it, so instead you have to frantically place it somewhere else and hope that the next piece that comes will fit properly. This makes things like building walls up against a border incredibly dicey, as it's possible you'll be given a piece that would fit in your wall, except that it ends out into the border and you can't use it. Also, you have to try to at least be somewhat efficient about how you build your walls, because depending on the land you're surrounding, you may or may not have room to add cannons each round, in an effort to better defend yourself. Create your area too small, and you can't expand your attack, but create your area too big, and risk not being able to fully rebuild your walls during the 25 seconds, due to having too many gaps to fill in. It's pretty diabolical. As much as I like the build phase, I don't care for the attack phase that much. In theory, the concept is sound. Use the cannons you've built to fend off the attacking ships, and depending on the specific ships that are attacking, you may want to concentrate your fire on certain ones first, as they provide different levels of threat. There's three main ships, gunships, troop carriers, and flagships. Gunships do pretty much what you would expect and just fire cannons. Troop carriers, on the other hand, are a problem because they are how ground units start to invade the land, and if they can get close to shore. And flagships shoot special fiery cannonballs at you, which make pieces of land unbuildable for three turns, making fixing your wall in the build phase that much more complicated. I like the idea of having the strategy behind the different ships, and that each of the ships take a different amount of hits to destroy, adding another level to your decision making. However, actually hitting the ships as they move around a good bit seems to be a bit more difficult than it really should be. There's nothing more annoying than launching an entire volley of cannonballs at a ship and having it just simply glide safely under all of them while you effectively waste a turn. 
Also, for the troop carriers, it's difficult to tell when they are set to deploy troops, and it seems like just being close to a land is enough. It would be nice if there was some indicator that you were in danger of this occurring, to give you a chance to change your target before it happens. Instead, it just tells you at the beginning of the build phase where they're coming from. But to me, that's a little too late. I'd rather have help dealing with the problem before it starts. As far as the graphics go, Rampart's fine, if not a bit primitive for 9192. However, it's also more or less a puzzle strategy game with some action thrown in, so you probably shouldn't be expecting much. From my view, it's extremely close to the arcade original in presentation. Maybe not pixel perfect, but it's damn close, so fans of the arcade version should be very happy with it. I especially like the animation of the cannonballs in the attack phase, as they change size depending on how high they are in the air. And if any of those fiery cannonballs are mixed in, you'll know immediately where you might have problems in the next round. Sometimes with these arcade ports, I find it interesting to compare the various versions, especially what the Super Nintendo ended up with. And in that case, the Super NES version included a bunch of questionably necessary scaling and rotation for seemingly no point other than to show off. And if you like that, great, but I think I prefer just the straight port of the Genesis Guide. From a control perspective, Rampart's fine. Based on how the game is structured, I'm really not sure how it'd be any better. I'm curious as to how the game would feel with a trackball instead of the D-pad, and maybe it might be slightly more precise or responsive, but I can't imagine it would be that different. And if you're used to the joystick version, it's going to be just like the arcade, and there are options to adjust the speed of the cursor if you feel like that needs some tweaking. Wow. Lastly, the sound. The music in Rampart is solid, and I really like the intro theme. It's very good, and go check it out if you haven't heard it. Periodically, during the game, there will be some nice fanfares as well. All the sound effects during the attack phase sound particularly bombastic, with some great sounding shots and explosions. And all the speech signifying the beginning and ending phases made it across from the arcade version. Couldn't ask for much more there. To be clear, Rampart on the Genesis is a fine port of the arcade game, and while it's not a perfect conversion, it's very close, so fans of the arcade should definitely look to pick this up. However, if you didn't like the game in the arcades, or are not a fan of its unique take on the puzzle and strategy genres, then this version certainly isn't going to convert you. I've mentioned before in previous episodes how I'm not the biggest fan of puzzle games, just simply because I'm not good at them, not because there's anything wrong with the games themselves, which makes Rampart a difficult game for me to rate. Having said that, I'm giving Rampart for the Genesis 2 stars. It's not a bad game, it's a solid port, and I'd much rather play it than derivative direct like Clax. While Rampart certainly isn't going to get into the list of my favorite games anytime soon, I do at least understand why people like it, it's just not for me. Okay, well this week was definitely an improvement from last week's disaster with Winter Olympic Games. I think that just goes to show you that more is certainly not always better, as while Winter Olympic Games boasted on both the front and the back that it was a 16 megabit title, I got much, much more enjoyment out of Rampart this week at only a quarter of the cartridge ROM size. While nice graphics and sound are important, gameplay is still king. Tune in next week when I'll be doing one last Master System review before the big episode 100, which, unlike a lot of these episodes, I had picked out a long time ago. For episode 99, though, we'll be going back to the early days of the Master System and playing a game that I've read as most easily described as a shooter, but it's definitely much different from the last Master System shooter we looked at in Astro Warrior. Remember, whatever you like to play, have fun, and be excellent to each other. Later!